Oliver patted Jared's shoulder and said lightly, My grandfather is already preparing for the wedding. I think it will be in two months. Jared's eyes flashed with a trace of surprise. It turned out that Arthur had already given his blessing. Suddenly, he looked at Scarlet. There was a tinge of admiration. It must not have been easy to get Arthur Steele to agree, despite all the rumors circulating around Scarlet. His gut feeling about yesterday's news was that it was not entirely true, but it wasn't entirely false either. He raised his eyebrows and looked at Oliver with a hint of playfulness in his eyes. So I take it you arrange this meeting so you can tell me about your wedding. Jared could guess what this was all about. The news about Scarlet was not backed by anything except the video, which did not provide any conclusive evidence. Talking about it would only bring more attention to it, or as dealing with it indirectly could divert attention away from it. By announcing that Oliver was getting married to Scarlet, they would be indirectly debunking the report because if it had been true, Oliver's family would not have agreed to their marriage. Consequently, Scarlet would be vindicated. Oliver raised his eyebrows and said, I owe you a favor. Today, I will repay it. Jared sighed. The businessman in front of him was too cunning. Even while returning a favor, he was the one who profited the most. Nevertheless, Jared was still happy with the scoop, so he laughed heartily. <laughs> All right, it's settled then. Then he winked at Scarlet and said, In the future, if you have any gossip to share, I'd be delighted if you shared it with me first. Scarlet did not interrupt the interview. First, Oliver did not bring up the topic of the video at all, which made her prepared words useless. Second, the reporters seemed to have a good relationship with Oliver, so there was no need to disturb them. However, when she heard Oliver say that their wedding was in these two months, she looked at him in surprise. When Oliver saw her surprised look, the expression in his eyes softened a lot. He smiled. Don't you want us to get married as soon as possible? He was also so forward in front of Jared. Scarlet's face turned slightly red, and she glared at him. Oliver laughed lightly and pulled Scarlet into his embrace. I look forward to our wedding. Jared was surprised by Oliver's open display of affection. He used to be cold and distant, but now he was so gentle and warm. Suddenly, Jared noticed something. What was on Oliver's chin? Was it a bite mark? After the interview, Oliver and Jared chatted for a while about their school days and common friends before they left the cafe, and Jared went on his way. Once they returned back to their car, Scarlet turned to Oliver. Did you tell Arthur that the wedding was going to be in two months? If he hadn't been told already, Arthur might be upset to hear that it was going to be so soon. What difference does it make? It's our marriage, not his, Oliver said in a calm voice. Scarlet didn't argue with him. She knew that everything Oliver did today was for her benefit. Let's go back to the Steele family villa tonight. Scarlet had realized recently that Oliver's grandparents wished they would visit them more often. Although Arthur was tough and thorny on the outside, he was soft and sweet on the inside. Oliver turned his head to look at her. He knew what she was thinking. Then he started the engine and said with a faint smile, Okay. Oliver wanted Scarlet to get some rest, but she insisted on going to the company, so he dropped her off there. Many people looked at them as they stopped in front of Sanders Holding. After what happened yesterday, many people thought that Oliver would dump Scarlet because he wouldn't be able to get his family to accept her. So today, everyone was shocked when LA Times published an exclusive interview with Oliver Steele, in which he said he was going to marry Scarlet in two months. Unconcerned with the gossip and the whispering, Scarlet bid Oliver farewell as usual and walked straight to the company. When she passed by the front desk, the receptionist greeted her energetically. Scarlet was a little surprised, but she still smiled and replied, Good morning. Scarlet did not know that just as she left, 
the receptionist posted a comment under the YouTube video showing the clip that went viral yesterday. I think the video is fake. Scarlett Sanders is amazing. But I guess no matter how good you are, haters gonna hate. In less than two hours, public opinion had completely shifted. Some people calling her names earlier were now her staunch defenders on public forums. Soon afterward, even the president of Copart Industries, director Walton, issued a statement defending Scarlett. He said the video was fake and that their divorce was due to irreconcilable differences and nothing else. Despite some people insisting that Scarlett was guilty, public opinion was mostly on her side. For every negative comment about her on YouTube or Twitter, there were 10 positive ones, saying she was harshly judged because she was a woman. Before Carl left Oliver's office, he got his year-end bonus. Although his expression did not change, he walked out of Oliver's office with a spring in his step. Before he left, Jade Black, the head of the finance department at Steel Enterprises, glanced at him expressionlessly as she was about to enter Oliver's office. Carl greeted her with a smile. Director Black, Director Steele is in a good mood today. He's happy with the numbers in the FD1 project report. Oliver had been particularly interested in the FD1 project recently, but the finance department made a mistake calculating the reserve funds yesterday. Carl informed Jade about it in advance, out of goodwill, and told her to report the information to Oliver, since he was in a good mood. However, when Jade heard what he said, she immediately thought of the recent news about Oliver and Scarlett. Her expression immediately contorted into a grimace. When she approached Carl, she lowered her voice and looked at him unhappily. Director Steele is being toyed with. As the CEO's secretary, aren't you going to do something about it? Toyed with? Carl repeated the word once, and his tone turned cold. He raised his eyebrows and looked at Jade. I have yet to see any man or woman capable of toying with Director Steele. Jade pursed her lips and walked past Carl. She went straight into Oliver's office. Carl stood where he was and heard the sound of the door closing behind him. His smiling eyes suddenly became dispirited. Jamie's phone kept ringing, but he did not pick it up. Instead, he ignored the call and put in a new SIM card to call Scarlett. The phone rang, but she did not pick up. As soon as he put his regular SIM card back, his phone started ringing again. Jamie's temples twitched. He pursed his lips and looked at the number that kept calling him. Finally, he picked up the phone with a face full of fatigue. Just as he picked up the call, there was a torrent of scolding from the other side. Jamie, I am your mother. Why aren't you answering my calls? What did I tell you yesterday? Didn't I tell you not to get involved with Scarlet anymore? What got into your head today to issue that statement? When she saw her son make a statement earlier that day, Jeannie was so angry that she almost fainted. She did not expect her son to help Scarlett. What was he trying to do? How could he help her after she had cuckolded him? Jamie looked at the online comments that were biased towards Scarlett and thought of the news that Oliver was going to marry her in two months. He tightly held onto his phone, but his face was indifferent. My statement does not affect me. In any case, public opinion has turned in her favor. She was lucky this time, Jeannie said hatefully. Anyway, I don't want this to happen again, Jamie. Have you forgotten how greedy and nasty she was when you two got divorced? Have you forgotten how she has been treating you recently? Jamie, however, knew better. He knew that Scarlet was neither nasty nor greedy. She only acted as she did after he pushed her to the edge. She wasn't like that. She was always warm and kind, despite the horrible way he treated her. Mom, I know. Jamie did not want to talk to Jeannie anymore, so he gave her a perfunctory reply. I have something to do, he said. I'm hanging up now. Hey, hey, Jamie, I'm not done yet. You... Before she could finish her sentence, Jamie hung up. On the other side of the phone, 
Jamie stood up from behind the desk. He took his car keys and coat and walked out. Oliver looked at the woman in front of him impatiently. Jade did not intend to leave. Her lips were tightly pursed and her expression was stubborn. In short, I hope that you investigate Miss Sanders properly. There might be some truth behind the accusations against her. I do not trust her. If Scarlett cheated on her husband, she could cheat on him as well, Jade thought. Such a woman was not worthy of a man like Oliver Steele. Get out. Oliver's expression was cold. Jade tightly clenched her fists and did not move. I know you're angry at me now, but one day you will understand that I'm doing this for your own good. Director Black, my personal life is none of your business. Now get out, and if you don't like it, you can go to human resources, Oliver said callously. Jade's eyes widened in disbelief. Oliver, are you firing me? Jade, get out of my office. Now. Oliver's tone brooked no argument. Jade still wanted to say something, but when she saw the man's cold eyes, she decided not to say anything. She was on the verge of tears. Afraid she wouldn't be able to hold back much longer, Jade bit her lips and quickly ran out of the office. Almost as soon as she left Oliver's office, Carl solemnly knocked on the door. Come in. Oliver loosened his tie and looked at Carl with a frown. What is it? Director Steele, Edward Vanderbilt is on the phone. Do you want to speak with him? Oliver narrowed his eyes dangerously, then nodded. Put him through. Okay. In less than half a minute, the phone in Oliver's office rang. He picked it up coldly. Oliver, long time no see, Edward said with his feminine and high-pitched voice. Your birthday is coming up soon. We should get together sometime and have a drink. Sure, Oliver said curtly. Edward did not care about Oliver's indifference. He suddenly asked casually, I heard you have a fiancé now. Are you going to get married soon? Looks like you already heard the news. Oliver took out a cigarette and lit it with one hand. The white smoke blurred his expression. Edward's sister, Evelyn, had used up all his patience for the Vanderbilts. He knew what Edward was trying to do. However, he didn't have the patience to entertain the Vanderbilts any longer. Edward's expression on the other end of the phone immediately darkened. A trace of ruthlessness flashed across his eyes, but his tone was still playful. It's Scarlett Sanders, isn't it? I heard a lot of rumors about you guys. I didn't believe them at first. You're serious about her, aren't you? When Edward first heard that Oliver was seeing someone, he dismissed the news because he had never seen Oliver with anyone before. He thought he didn't care about anything except his work. He thought that if one day Oliver got married, it would be to someone who'd help advance his career. Clearly, he was wrong. Now that things had come to this point, Edward knew that the rumors were not just for show. The Vanderbilts had proposed a while ago to move Vanderbilt Enterprises to Star City Mall, which was owned by Steel Enterprises. However, after his sister released a video of Scarlett, he got a call from Oliver's secretary informing him that the move to Star City Mall was put indefinitely on hold. Oliver... We've known each other for many years. I know that you're angry at my sister, and rightfully so, I might add. But don't take it out on the rest of the Vanderbilts. Without help from Steel Enterprises, we won't be able to establish a sustainable business presence in LA, and we'll take a serious financial hit. When Oliver heard his words, his eyes were as cold as usual. However, his tone carried a trace of regret as he said, about this topic, I think you have misunderstood me. Edward frowned slightly. What is it? Oliver's lips curled into a cold smile, but he said lightly, The proposal to sell your products at Star City Mall was turned down by Arthur. As you surely know, he has the final say in such matters. When I heard the news now, I was also a little surprised. I was just about to ask him about it. 
Edward's lips were tightly pursed, and even his eyes narrowed. From what I've heard, your grandfather stepped down, and you took his place as head of Steel Enterprises. Why is he still the one making such decisions? Although he has given me full authority to make managerial decisions, he's still the president of Steel Enterprises. Oliver shifted all the blame on Arthur without feeling any guilt about it. He was able to handle Edward with ease. When Edward heard Oliver's words, his face turned stiff. He didn't know whether Oliver was being level with him. However, regardless of who decided to turn down their proposal, one thing was clear. The Steels were quite dissatisfied with the Vanderbilts. What could be the reason behind that? Edward could only think of one reason. It had to do something with Scarlett Sanders. He wondered how she could have so much influence over Oliver and his family. A trace of ruthlessness flashed across Edward's eyes. He suddenly laughed again. I'm coming to LA soon. When I arrive, I will personally apologize for any trouble Evelyn has caused you. I think Arthur is only punishing my little sister. How can the friendship between our two families be worn down by a small matter? Oliver did not say anything. Edward's expression became even darker. I'm getting more and more curious about Miss Sanders. He wondered about the woman who was able to spoil the friendship they had built over years of cooperation. Of course, their friendship was not as solid as Edward imagined it. Oliver viewed Edward as his former business partner, nothing more. She's just an ordinary woman, Oliver said calmly. Edward imagined it. Oliver viewed Edward as his former business partner, nothing more. She's just an ordinary woman, Oliver said calmly. A woman capable of making Oliver Steele fall in love is anything but ordinary. Edward's smile could be felt through his tone. As soon as he hung up, Edward's smile disappeared and a deep frown took its place. Edward's new secretary entered his office to bring him some coffee. She had a charming smile and was about to chat with Edward when she noticed the scowl on his face. She was about to leave in silence when Edward grabbed the cup of coffee she had brought him and threw it at her, hitting her shoulder. The cup of coffee was so hot, she could not help screaming. When Edward heard the screams, he became even more irritated. He shouted angrily, Get out! When he heard the noise inside, another assistant came in and escorted the secretary out with an impassive face. It was clear from his expression that this was not the first time he had witnessed his boss flipping out like that. After the two of them went out, Edward swept all the documents on his desk onto the ground. Then he took out his phone and dialed a number. Hello, brother. When Evelyn picked up the phone, Cordelia was leaning against the window. They were currently in the underground parking lot of the hotel she was staying at. When Evelyn saw today's entertainment news, she was furious. She wanted to rush to Steel Enterprises to argue with Oliver. However, Cordelia ran out of nowhere and stopped her. You still call me brother? How can I have such a stupid sister like you? Edward took out all his frustration from dealing with Oliver on his sister. Evelyn did not know that their company's plan to sell their product line at Star City Mall had been turned down. She gritted her teeth and said, I can't stand that woman. I don't know how she got the steels to accept her. My plan was supposed to work, but today Oliver announced that he's still getting married to her. I can't believe it. Evelyn didn't know what had gone wrong. The video was authentic. She was sure of it. Logically speaking, the Steels should have closed their doors to her. Instead, Oliver announced that they were going to get married. To make matters worse, people on social media seemed to side with her. She wanted to turn her into a pariah, but she ended up making her more popular and beloved than she used to be. How could Scarlet be so goddamn lucky? Evelyn felt even more irritated. I don't believe that woman will marry into the Steele family. It must be fake news. As soon as Oliver's family hears about it, they will disavow her. Fake news? You think you're so damn smart, don't you? Edward sneered. 
I just called Oliver, and he confirmed it to me personally. He will marry that woman. And now, because of your recklessness, Steel Enterprises turned down our proposal to sell our products in their malls. What? Evelyn cried as she put on her seatbelt. <gasps> Brother, are you joking? I'm not joking. You can call Dad and Grandpa to ask, Edward said. Evelyn, you've got to fix this. You're well aware of what fate awaits you if you don't. Edward's face was gloomy. Evelyn grabbed her safety belt tightly. Outside, Cordelia was still knocking on her car window. Evelyn, if you treat me like this, I don't mind going to the Steele family to tell them what you said to me. You're clearly the one who's trying to hurt Scarlet. After using me, now you want to run away? You're horrible. Initially, Cordelia did not want to give that video to Evelyn. Cordelia knew how much Oliver doted on Scarlet. She wouldn't have done something to incur his wrath. However, Evelyn convinced her that she was Oliver's true love interest. She even told her that Oliver's grandparents were on her side and would not tolerate Scarlet. Evelyn promised to help Morgan Incorporated if Cordelia helped her. Desperate for help, Cordelia believed her and gave her the video. When Cordelia read all the negative comments online about Scarlet after the video went viral, she was quite happy. But this didn't last long. She soon got a message from Director Firth informing her that his company would no longer be working with Morgan Incorporated, as they could not afford to offend Steel Enterprises. Cordelia understood that she had angered Oliver. That was why he was being so ruthless. With help from Director Firth's company, Morgan Incorporated could have slowly recovered. But now that they had withdrawn their support, her company would not be able to hold on for long. She quickly called Evelyn to ask for her help, but she did not answer her. So she had no choice but to come to speak to her in person. Cordelia could now clearly see Evelyn's true colors. She was basically using her. Evelyn, come out! Anyway, I have plenty of time now, so I'm not afraid of wasting it with you. Cordelia saw that Evelyn did not leave the car, so she stood in front of the car and opened her arms wide. She wasn't going to let Evelyn drive away. Oliver will be mine. You'll see, brother, Evelyn said as she held her phone tightly. Her face was full of ruthlessness. Even if Steel Enterprises opposes us for now, it won't always be like that. Aren't you and Grandpa coming here soon? Her grandfather will know how to deal with this. Who would have thought that her stunt would not only fail, but also drive Oliver to announce that he's going to marry Scarlet? Evelyn was both annoyed and angry. She had to admit that Scarlet was a formidable opponent. It is now up to Grandpa, Edward agreed. If there's anyone who can deal with the mess you've made, it's him. By the way, how's Yana been doing? Yana? A hint of disdain appeared on the corner of Evelyn's mouth as she thought of Scarlet's younger sister. <sighs> She's a brat, just as she has always been. But she hates Scarlet with a passion. She might prove us useful. I see. Then build a good relationship with her. I don't want you to make a mess of other things before I come to LA. Edward narrowed his eyes. Evelyn did not comment. Outside, Cordelia was still roaring angrily, but Evelyn continued to ignore her. Fed up with that attitude, Cordelia took out her keys from her purse and keyed Evelyn's car. Hey, what are you doing? Evelyn cried out in surprise. What's going on over there? Edward asked as he heard his sister shouting over the phone. Nothing, I just met a crazy woman. Evelyn saw that Cordelia was still keying her car but did not get out to stop her. Oh, brother, I have something to take care of. We'll talk later, Evelyn said and hung up the phone. Then she immediately started the engine. She did not care about the woman standing in front of the car, and she stepped on the accelerator. Cordelia did not expect Evelyn to be so ruthless. Seeing that Evelyn had no intention of stopping, Cordelia jumped to the side just before she got run over. Not stopping to check if Cordelia was fine, Evelyn stepped on the accelerator and drove out. You bitch! Cordelia cried out. You'll not get away with this! 
Evelyn, however, did not hear her, as she was already too far away. At noon, Scarlett examined the lunchbox in front of her and looked at Quinn in confusion. The smile on Quinn's face became wider, and she laughed. Miss Sanders, guess who sent this over? Scarlett raised her eyebrows and thought for a while. Was it Arthur Steele? Scarlett had gotten used to Arthur sending her lunch boxes to work from time to time. Bingo, Miss Sanders. You guessed right, Quinn said cheerfully. Quinn knew this meant that Oliver's family did not have ill feelings towards Scarlett, despite everything that had happened recently. Scarlett looked at the lunchbox, and the smile on her face grew bigger. She thought that Arthur would be angry at her for a while, so she hadn't expected he would send her lunch anytime soon. After Quinn left her office, Scarlett took out her phone and sent a WhatsApp message to Arthur. Scarlett sent Arthur a voice message. Thank you. I love today's lunch. There was no reply for a long time. Just when Scarlett thought Arthur was not going to reply, she received a message from him. Arthur, what are you thanking me for? It's not like I prepared it. If you want to thank anyone, then thank Oliver's grandmother. It has nothing to do with me. Despite Arthur's reply, Scarlett's heart was warm, and she did not say anything else. During lunch, she talked to Oliver on the phone. Philip called me just now, Oliver said in his low, sexy voice. Why did he call you? Scarlett asked while eating the food Arthur sent her. Scarlett also did not remember that the two of them were so familiar with each other. Oliver laughed when he heard her question. We talked about business. Oh, Scarlett did not seem to believe him. Of course, we also talked about the necessary conditions that have to be met before our marriage. Oliver thought about his conversation with Philip today and curled his lips. Scarlett was stunned, and her face immediately turned red. Jimmy never liked Philip, but Oliver seemed to get along with him well. This made Scarlett happy, but at the same time, she felt a little jealous. If Philip needed anything now, he wouldn't look for her. He would just seek out Oliver. What conditions? Scarlett raised her eyebrows, but the person on the other side of the phone could not see it. Oliver chuckled. For example, you'd have to give me a child first. Oh, Oliver, don't tease me. Tell me what you really talked about. If you don't believe me, why don't you call Philip and ask him? Oliver tried not to laugh. Scarlett blushed. She was glad that the man could not see her and did not know how embarrassed she was. She snorted lightly and did not say anything. Are you angry? Oliver teased her. Or don't you want to have a child? Scarlett knew that Oliver was just pulling her sleeve, so she did not answer his question. I'm done eating. I have to go back to work. I'll pick you up after work. Oliver's tone returned back to normal. Okay, take care, Scarlett said. Then with a mwah sound, she quickly hung up the phone. Scarlett just realized that she had never done that before with Jamie. Oliver really changed her. Or perhaps Oliver brought out her true self. On the other side of the phone, Oliver was smiling broadly. Scarlett's kiss had made his day. When Jeannie arrived at Sanders' holding, she was not received by Scarlett. When Quinn told Scarlett about the news from the front desk, Scarlett's expression was indifferent. Scarlett currently had nothing toward Jeannie except disgust and indifference. Tell the front desk that I'm in a meeting and I'm not free. Quinn nodded and left the office. With the receptionist relaying Scarlett's message to her, Jeannie frowned. Ugh, call her again. Jeannie told the receptionist imperiously. And tell her that I have something important to talk to her about. If she does not see me now, then I'll wait here until she's free. The receptionist felt like she was in an awkward position. Quinn made it clear that Scarlett did not want to see this woman. But this wasn't an ordinary person she could have escorted out of the building. She was the mother of Jamie Walton, head of Copart Industries. So she did not dare to offend her. Hence, she swallowed and called Quinn again. As expected, she got the same answer. 
Jeannie's expression contorted into a scowl. She snorted coldly and sat in the reception hall not far from the front desk. Her back was stiff as she waited there. Her phone rang several times, but she did not even take out the phone from her bag. She just sat there, waiting in silence. In the afternoon, Scarlett wanted to go out to a nearby company to discuss some business. As soon as she got to the lobby, Jeannie headed straight toward her. She would have slapped her had Scarlett not reacted quickly and grabbed her wrist. Looking at the woman in front of her, Scarlett frowned. Then she directly pushed Jeannie away. Mrs. Walton, you dare to attack me at my own company? Scarlett, you dare keep toying with my son? Was it not enough for you to divorce Jamie? Do you have to play with his feelings as well? After waiting for nearly three hours, Jeannie's anger had reached its peak. She could no longer get a hold of herself. I'm warning you, stay away from my son! Jeannie's face was full of disgust. Scarlett's expression became colder. Mrs. Walton, there is nothing between Jamie and me, and I want nothing to do with him. If this is some sort of act orchestrated by you and Adriana, I'm sorry, I don't have time. A while ago, Adriana also came to her and begged her to stay away from Jamie. How many times did she have to tell them that she was not interested in Jamie and wanted nothing to do with him before they got the message? She looked at the security guard at the side. When you see this woman in the future, don't let her in. The security guards looked at each other and then hurriedly nodded. Jeannie's eyes turned dark. Scarlet, this is your true nature, isn't it? Selfish and arrogant. If you don't stay away from my son, I'll... Scarlet's laugh interrupted Jeannie mid-sentence. <laughs> You should tell your son to stop calling me. Let him look after his pregnant wife. I want nothing to do with him. Scarlett's message was crystal clear. But would Jamie get the hint? How dare you talk to me like that? Jeannie snapped at Scarlett. Jeannie was incensed that Scarlett was so flippant with her. Ever since she started going out with Oliver, she had become insufferable. Scarlett, don't forget, I'm your former mother-in-law. Be more polite when you talk to me. Jeannie was so angry that she did not know what else to say. Thank you for reminding me. I did not forget what you did to me as my former mother-in-law when I wanted to divorce Jamie. Scarlet curled her lips in a mocking smile. Scarlet had seen through Jeannie a long time ago. Mrs. Walton, you're not welcome here at Sanders Holding. Don't come here again. Otherwise, I will have the Bloomingdale Bridge case reopened. Jeannie's expression changed. Scarlet made her threat casually, but Jeannie shuddered when she heard it. Scarlet, what kind of person are you? With time... Oliver's family will see you for what you are. Let's see if they will still accept you then, Jeannie said spitefully. Scarlett did not even bother to answer and directly left the building, leaving Jeannie alone with a deep scowl on her face. When Evelyn arrived at Steele Enterprises and asked to see Oliver, the receptionist told her that Director Steele did not have time to see her. Unable to do anything about it, Evelyn went back to her car and drove to the Steele family villa. She believed that Oliver's family had been deceived by Scarlet. Otherwise, they would not have accepted her. She needed to do something to set the record straight. When Evelyn arrived at the Steele family villa, neither Arthur nor Catherine came forward to greet her. Instead, she was greeted by the maid. Mr. Steele had a headache today and is resting in the bedroom. He doesn't want to see any guests the maid said in a flat tone. What about Mrs. Steele? Evelyn quickly asked. Mrs. Steele is looking after her husband and has no time to see guests. The maid relayed what she was told without any embellishments. Evelyn immediately understood. It was not that they did not want to see guests. They just did not want to see her. Evelyn gritted her teeth. <sighs> then please relay this message to them. 
tell them Evelyn Steele wants to apologize for her impulsive behavior earlier. I was just worried that Scarlet would deceive them. That's why I posted the video online. I surely did not mean to embarrass the Steele family. Although the video yesterday was mainly targeted at Scarlet, it was still somewhat embarrassing for the Steeles. The maid smiled apologetically, but did not open the door for her. I'm sorry, Miss Vanderbilt, but you should come again another time. After saying that, the maid went back inside and did not say anything else to Evelyn. Evelyn's genial expression immediately morphed into a frown. She did not understand. Clearly, that video was real. Why were the Steels still being protective of Scarlet? But if they refused to even talk with her, what could she do? She couldn't just barge in. Her brother had already warned her not to cause trouble again. Evelyn tightly clenched her fists. She had to wait for her brother and grandfather to come to L.A. There was no other way. After Jeannie left Sanders holding, she received a call from her niece, Cordelia. Knowing that if she did not answer, her niece would keep calling, Jeannie answered the phone. Hello, aunt. Cordelia's tone was flustered, as if she was about to cry. Aunt Jeannie, I need your help. This time you must help me. You must help Morgan Incorporated. Cordelia had already begged her father and brother for help, but their support was not enough. The last time Cordelia came to her, Jeannie had already given her a few hundred thousand dollars. She did not look forward to bailing out her niece again. Cordelia, it's not that I don't want to help you, but this time I can't. You know, when Scarlett divorced Jamie, she took half of the company's assets in the San Francisco project, and the remaining half was not sold at a profit. So Copart Industries is also not doing great. My grandfather has said that some of the projects my cousin is working on are pretty good. If Copart Industries can work with Morgan Incorporated, we can save the company. Aunt, please. Cordelia never thought a day would come when she would have to beg her aunt for help. Jeannie didn't want her niece to get her hopes up, so her tone became cold. Cordelia, I can speak with Jamie about it, but I can't promise anything. Now, I have some work to take care of, so I need to go. Take care. Jeannie hung up the phone without waiting for Cordelia's reply. Morgan Incorporated was in a really bad position. How could Jeannie let Copart Industries fall into the same trap? Cordelia needed to learn to fend for herself. Thinking of all kinds of annoying things that had happened recently, Jeannie's mood worsened. She directly got into her car and drove away. Harold and Yana did not make any moves against Scarlet, but she did not let that lull her into a false sense of security. She remained on her guard at all times. Very soon, Oliver's birthday came up. This time, Oliver's birthday banquet was going to be held in Okeano's hotel. Of course, since the banquet was hosted by Oliver Steele, no expenses would be spared for the occasion. This afternoon, Scarlett got off work early. She had just walked out of Sanders Holding when she saw Carl standing in front of a G500 black Mercedes-Benz. Seeing her, Carl nodded. Miss Sanders, Director Steele asked me to take you to the club. Scarlett nodded with a smile and got in the car. Things were going well so far for Scarlett. Would Lady Luck continue to smile on her? Soon, Carl brought her to a high-class club. Miss Sanders, Director Steele has some matters to take care of. He'll be here shortly. In the meantime, you can change into a dress. After saying this, Carl added, Director Steele said that no matter which dress you choose, you will like it. After Carl said that, he coughed dryly to hide his embarrassment. Recently, Director Steele had become more open about his relationship with Scarlett and didn't shy from showing his affection publicly. Scarlett's face turned slightly red. She nodded, then walked straight into the clubhouse. The store manager and the staff all came out to welcome her. A few young girls couldn't help but look at Scarlett with envious eyes. They wished to be in her shoes. They wondered how the human in front of them was able to get LA's most eligible bachelor to fall in love with her. Miss Sanders, 
The dresses Director Steele ordered from Milan have arrived. Miss Sanders, which dress do you like? We will change it according to your measurements. The manager smiled. Thank you. Scarlet smiled and nodded at the store manager before walking straight inside. Oliver knew what she liked, so all the dresses fit her taste. It took her a while to figure out which dress she liked the most, but eventually she picked one. The dress she chose was made entirely of Supima cotton. The upper part was white, while the lower part was pink and blue. Her left shoulder was bare. It also had small diamonds woven into the white fabric from her right shoulder to her lower left waist. Scarlet looked like a fairy tale princess in that dress. Today was Oliver's birthday party. He told her last night that he would officially announce their relationship at that party. Their relationship. It had only been three months since they had known each other, but it seemed like they had been together for years. Sometimes they even knew each other's thoughts just by looking at each other. Thinking about what was going to happen tonight, Scarlett's expectation was tinged with some nervousness. She tightened the dress in her hands and walked into the fitting room. Not long after, she came out of the fitting room. While she was changing in her dress, another woman walked into the clubhouse. She had a slim figure and was also wearing an elegant dress. The pearl necklace on her neck matched her pretty white teeth. The woman was none other than Yana. Seeing Scarlet frown slightly as she noticed her, the manager smiled sheepishly. Miss Sanders, the club was supposed to be open to you alone today, but she said she's your biological sister. She said that she just came to greet you. The family affairs of the Sanders family were an open secret. It was well known that the Sanders sister did not get along. The manager did not want Yana to enter the clubhouse, but Yana's calm and composed expression made him agree to her request. After seeing Scarlett's reaction, however, he couldn't help regretting his decision. Scarlett swept a glance at the store and found that Carl was not around. She knew if he had been there, he wouldn't have let Yana come in. She comforted the store manager with a smile. It's okay. When she turned her head to look at Yana, Scarlett's smile disappeared. Her expression was somewhat cold. Next time, don't pretend to be my sister to get preferential treatment. You're not my sister. When Yana heard Scarlett's words, she did not get angry. Instead, her smile became even more dazzling. Sis, why are you so aggressive today? I know that today is your boyfriend's birthday. I will come to wish my brother-in-law a happy birthday. After Yana finished speaking, she giggled again. The beautiful dress she was wearing shone brightly under the light. Scarlet frowned. Arthur was very protective. Ever since he found out that Scarlet's relationship with the rest of her family was not so good, he ignored them. So Scarlet assumed that the Sanders were not invited to the banquet. Yet, here was Yana saying that she was going to attend Oliver's birthday banquet. Scarlet did not know what to make of that. As if she knew what Scarlet was thinking, a hint of pride flashed across Yana's eyes. Oh, by the way, I have to introduce you to my new boyfriend, Edward Vanderbilt. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's Oliver's business partner. Anyway, see you later at the banquet, sis. As if to confirm her story, a man in a tailored suit entered the place. He was tall and straight and had a striking appearance. Despite being in his 30s, he had the slightly feminine features of a teenage heartthrob. The man's gaze instantly landed on her, and Scarlet couldn't help but shudder. He walked a few steps to Yana's side and pulled her petite body into his embrace. Yana, have you greeted your sister? How about letting your sister come with us so we can all go together to Okeano's hotel? The man leaned closer to Yana's ear and his sexy thin lips slightly hooked up. His eyes were filled with unexplainable playfulness. Yana bashfully punched his chest, but her eyes remained fixed on Scarlet. Didn't I tell you not to be like this in public? Don't embarrass me. What can I do? You look ravishing in that dress. Looking at the couple flirting in front of her, 
Scarlet remained impassive. A while ago, she had already guessed that Yana and Edward were together, so she wasn't completely caught off guard. Scarlet had a hint of ridicule at the corner of her mouth. She still remembered the other guy Yana was seeing not too long ago. Scarlet was just about to turn around when Edward walked up to her with a playful look in his eyes. I take it you're Yana's older sister, Scarlet, right? I heard that you and Oliver are already engaged. Your reputation precedes you, Miss Sanders. I can see why Oliver was quite taken with... Before he could finish, Scarlet walked past him and Yana and headed outside. Edward's expression darkened. Carl, who had just finished his phone call, came in. When he saw the people inside, his expression froze. He quickly walked towards Scarlet. Miss Sanders, are you ready to go? Scarlet nodded. Carl was going to say that Director Steele was about to arrive, but Edward suddenly smiled and walked toward the two of them with Yana in his arms. Carl, aren't you going to introduce me? He looked at Scarlet. Carl's face suddenly turned expressionless. He said to Edward in a businesslike manner, Miss Sanders, this is Edward Vanderbilt, head of Vanderbilt Enterprises. Director Vanderbilt, this is Scarlett Sanders. She's the general manager of Sanders Holding and Director Steele's fiance. Now, if you'll excuse us, Mr. Vanderbilt, Miss Sanders needs to go. After he finished speaking, he looked at Scarlett. Before they could leave, Edward looked at Scarlett and addressed her. Miss Sanders, I heard that Yana made you upset a while ago, but I know you're magnanimous and won't hold it against her. If it's also any consolation, I also apologize on her behalf. Edward's voice was low and feminine. Although his voice was pleasant, there was something about it that made Scarlet's skin crawl. Scarlet frowned and said indifferently, You give me too much credit, Director Vanderbilt. Suffering fools is not my strong suit, I'm afraid. However, I do accept your apology. Scarlet knew that Oliver had already taught the Vanderbilts a lesson by disrupting their plans to move to L.A. There was no point in adding insult to injury. In that case, Yana and I are heading to Okeano's hotel in my car. It would be a pleasure if you'd come with us. Yana suddenly broke free from Edward's arms and walked towards Scarlet with a smile on her face. I think Director Steele might be busy today. You can come with us. We're going there anyway. Why wait? Scarlet didn't say anything. She just ignored them and walked outside. Carl quickly followed behind her. Yana looked at Scarlet's back, and her smiling face contorted into a scowl. It was not easy for her to be nice to Scarlet. On top of that, Edward's compliments to her made it even harder to bear. Yana, don't be angry. A proud woman like her will be ruined by her arrogance sooner or later. Edward chuckled and took a step forward to hug Yana. He looked at Scarlet's back as she left. When he recalled how Oliver spurned his sister, Evelyn, a trace of ruthlessness flashed across his eyes. Yana took a deep breath and snuggled up to Edward's chest. Edward, now you see how she treats me. Even father can't control her. But Edward, don't worry. My father is very pleased with you. In time, he'll give me Sanders holding, and whatever is mine will be yours. Of course, for that to happen, Edward needed to help her secure her hold over Sanders holdings. Naturally, she left that part out. Edward smiled playfully. He gently lifted Yana's chin and leaned forward for a kiss. Yana, don't worry. If anyone makes you feel bad, I'll make them feel a hundred times worse. Yana's eyes revealed a smile. Finally, Scarlet was no longer the only person with someone behind her back. Just as Scarlet left the club, Oliver arrived in his sports car. After getting out of the car, he walked straight toward her. He had changed into a black suit. Inside was the light blue shirt that Scarlet bought for him, paired with a navy blue tie. His incomparably handsome face looked even more handsome than usual. At that moment, there was a glint in his bright, penetrating eyes and a charming smile on his lips. 
You look amazing. Oliver did not hold back his praise as he walked up to Scarlet. Scarlet coughed lightly and looked at Carl beside her. A blush rose on her face. Oliver narrowed his eyes and looked straight at Carl. The meaning in his eyes was self-evident. Carl immediately rubbed his nose to show that he understood. He took the car key from Oliver and walked straight toward the silver-gray sports car. Scarlet gave him a sidelong glance. I thought you would be very busy tonight. I wanted Carl to tell you there was no need to come to pick me up. That won't do. Oliver chuckled. He pulled Scarlet's hand and walked toward the Mercedes-Benz G500. Arthur insisted I come pick you up personally today. You're going to be late for your own birthday party? Scarlet muttered with an amused smile. Back at the club, Edward was looking at Scarlet and Oliver. Seeing Oliver's affectionate attitude toward her, Edward turned to Yana. When did your sister get together with Oliver? Yana pursed her lips. Then she said indifferently, She said that it was after she divorced Jamie Walton, but... She looked at Edward. You should also know that they were together long before that. Before she got divorced? Edward narrowed his eyes. Even if what Yana said was true, Edward knew that Oliver had only recently returned to America, as he was in England before that. How could his relationship blossom in such a short time? You said that Scarlett and Jamie got divorced because Adriana plotted against them, right? Edward asked. Yana nodded. That's what she told me. But I don't trust what she says. True. Edward nodded. I heard that Jamie recently issued a statement in support of Scarlett after the video showing her leaving Oliver's hotel room was leaked. It seems he might still have feelings for her. I don't know how she manages to have such a firm hold over the men in her life. I don't understand how they let her toy with them. Yana commented. Inside, Yana envied Scarlett for getting Oliver. At least now, with Edward's help, she would be able to reclaim Sanders' holding. When Edward heard Yana's words, he narrowed his eyes. He quickly swept his gaze over Yana's face. Let's go, he said in a comforting tone. The party will begin soon. On the way to the car, Oliver occasionally glanced at Scarlet, but he didn't say anything. Finally, Scarlet couldn't help asking, What are you looking at? Oliver narrowed his eyes. Scarlet, don't you know what day it is? Scarlet looked at him in puzzlement. I know. Isn't today your birthday? Oliver pursed his lips, and a trace of displeasure flashed in his eyes. Scarlet suddenly grabbed his right hand and lowered her head. Then she leaned forward and gave him a quick kiss on the cheek. Happy birthday, Mr. Steele. Oliver's expression remained somber as he continued driving. He withdrew his hand without saying a word. Seeing his expression from the corner of her eye, Scarlet tightened her grip on the phone in her bag, and her brows furrowed. Along the way, she did not know if he was sulking, but Oliver did not take the initiative to talk to Scarlet. Even when Scarlet opened a topic, he gave curt and perfunctory answers. Soon, they arrived at their destination. At this moment, all kinds of luxury cars were parked outside the hotel. All the guests were in suits or beautiful dresses. The atmosphere was lively, and people passing by wished they were among the invited. When Oliver was about to get out of the car, Scarlet suddenly grabbed his right hand and looked at his expressionless face with gentle eyes. What's the matter? Did I say something to upset you? Oliver looked into Scarlet's eyes and said lightly, No. If people see you like that at your own birthday party, they'll think I did something to make you angry, Scarlet muttered. Scarlet suddenly leaned over and kissed Oliver's thin lips. A trace of redness appeared on her face. Then she hooked her hair behind her ear and smiled. Don't be angry. I've prepared your birthday present. It's just that I'll give it to you when we return home tonight, okay? Scarlet didn't want Oliver to be unhappy on his own birthday. Of course, she did not forget that today was his birthday. 
of course she had prepared a present for him. However, thinking about Riley's expression when she prepared this gift, Scarlett wondered if it would be better to get him another present instead. Scarlett's cheeks turned red at the thought. Oliver narrowed his eyes, and his lips curled into a roguish smile. He lifted Scarlett's chin and planted a kiss on her lips. You're going to give me my birthday present tonight? Scarlett hesitated for a moment, and then nodded. Yes. Her hand was still holding onto the strap of her bag. I'm intrigued. Tell me, what kind of mysterious gift is it? Why can you only give it to me at night? Oliver asked jokingly. It's just an ordinary gift. Scarlet patted Oliver's hand away, afraid that he would continue to ask. She quickly took a look at her phone. It's almost time. Let's go in. As soon as she got out of the car, the hotel manager, Sean, walked up to them. You're finally here. Arthur and Tristan are getting tired of entertaining the guests by themselves. Scarlet smiled gently at Sean. It's okay, we're going in. Sean was just about to say something when he suddenly felt a cold gaze on him. He was stunned and turned around. He saw the man in the driver's seat get out of the car. Oliver walked up to Scarlet, took her hand, and then looked at Sean. Don't worry, we'll not keep the guests waiting. Sean understood what was going on and laughed. Then I wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Oliver raised his eyebrows and gave his car keys to him. Then he walked inside with Scarlet in his arms. Today, Scarlet appeared in front of everyone in LA as Oliver's fiance. She was a little nervous. Unlike most guests, Scarlet did not put on heavy makeup. She simply tied her hair behind her head and let two strands of curly hair hang down from both sides. She looked elegant in her dress. Her minimalist approach to beauty made her look like a real princess. Oliver thought she was breathtaking when he looked at her, and his heart beat faster. He suddenly lowered his head, and his thin lips quickly fell on Scarlet's lips. They walked up the stairs and arrived at the entrance of the grand courtyard. In front of them was a bright red carpet. They could hear the chatter and music coming from inside. Time seemed to stop at that moment. First, someone among the guests let out a soft cry, and then came the sound of people talking in a breath of cold air. Very quickly, the lively hall quieted down. Only the melodic music of the harpist could be heard. Scarlet was also somewhat stunned. When she opened her eyes and saw the smile in the eyes of the man in front of her, her face instantly turned red. What did the night have in store for them? With so many eyes on her, Scarlet felt a bit awkward. Oliver led her forward, and they smiled at the guests they made eye contact with. Slowly, the guests returned to their lively conversations. Scarlet had caused quite a stir in L.A. after the video came out. Everyone had their own theory about the infamous love triangle. When Oliver announced that he was going to marry Scarlet, many people thought it was some sort of publicity stunt. However, after he kissed her in front of everyone just now, it became clear to everyone that this was not an act. Director Steele, will you introduce us to your friend? Jade asked. This is Scarlett Sanders, my fiancé, Oliver said casually. Afterward, he looked at Scarlett. Scarlett, this is Jade Black. She's the head of the finance department at Steel Enterprises. Scarlett smiled at her. Pleasure to meet you, Director Black. Likewise, Jade said, hiding the surprise in her eyes as she looked at Oliver. You're so beautiful and elegant. I can see how Director Steele is so taken with you. You two look so good together. Congratulations. Thank you. We expect to see you at our wedding when the time comes, Oliver said. Although the smile on his face was faint, everyone could tell that he was in a good mood. The women who had previously been hoping to catch Oliver's eye could do nothing but sigh in frustration. Oliver and Scarlett engaged in small talk with many of the guests. 
Slowly, they made their way to the center of the hall, where Oliver's family was. Oliver's closest friends, Gareth, Hank, and Liam, were also there waiting. Seeing Scarlet's flushed face, Gareth winked at her. Did you see how half the women looked at you when you entered the hall? The jealousy in the room was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. Scarlet glared at him, then turned around and looked at Oliver's grandparents. Mr. Steele, Mrs. Steele. Catherine lightly nodded. Arthur snorted. You came so early. Scarlet was speechless. She didn't know if he was serious or whether he was being sarcastic. However, Scarlet was already used to Arthur's crusty personality. She immediately smiled and apologized. Sorry, I'll definitely come earlier next time. Arthur looked Scarlet up and down again. Then he frowned and curled his lips. Haven't I been sending meal boxes to your office every day? Why are you still so thin? Are you throwing away the food I'm sending you? Scarlet did not know whether to laugh or cry. No, I wouldn't trade those meals with a takeaway from a Michelin-starred restaurant. Arthur nodded his head in satisfaction. Mm, at least you're nicer than Oliver. After saying that, the old man glanced at his grandson in dissatisfaction. However, Catherine had warned him not to cause trouble on his grandson's birthday, so he didn't say anything. Soon, the banquet began. As hosts, Scarlett and Oliver went around the room to greet and talk with all the guests. For a time, the atmosphere of the banquet was rather harmonious. Scarlett's alcohol tolerance was not high, but she felt she had to drink more than usual given the occasion. After walking around and seeing a trace of fatigue appear on her face, Oliver wrapped his arms around her waist and asked in a low voice, Are you tired? It's okay. Scarlet shook her head. Today's occasion was very formal. She naturally could not drag Oliver down. However, she had clearly underestimated Oliver's protective attitude toward her. Without her asking, he led her to the resting area. Let's take a break. We've already greeted all the guests. Arthur and Catherine can take over entertaining the guests for a while. As they walked away, they didn't notice the Vanderbilts, who arrived late because they had just come from England. As soon as they entered, they saw Scarlet sitting with Oliver in the resting area. Evelyn, is that the woman you mentioned? Leopold leaned on his walking stick. When he saw Oliver intimately hugging Scarlet, his expression immediately darkened. Seeing Oliver and Scarlet together, Evelyn also clenched her fists. Yes, grandfather, it is her. Hmm, I thought she'd be more impressive. Edith snorted. Is that the reason Oliver is treating the Vanderbilts with such scorn? Today he didn't even send a car to pick us out from the airport. He should have. Seeing the people around her listening attentively, Edward interrupted his mother before she could finish her sentence. Mom, Oliver was busy today. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have sent a car. You're his closest friend, but he does not take you seriously. Oliver would not have developed Winmark Corporation if it were not for you, Edith said. Yet in the end, he only let you have 10% of the shares of the company you helped build. Watch what you're saying, Edward warned. We still have to rely on Oliver to move to LA. We cannot risk antagonizing him. Let's go in, Leopold said. Let's see what the Steels have to say. He also didn't look too happy. Their company had suffered terrible losses because Steel Enterprises did not allow their product line to be sold at its malls. They came to LA ahead of schedule specifically to deal with that situation. What would it take for the Steels and the Vanderbilts to come to terms? <laughs>